I love picking topics for this podcast that are normally not questioned on an everyday basis. In fact, a lot of the topics I pick stem from me being able to slow down for a few seconds and question, hey, where did this come from? Or why do we do this? Most of them are pretty easy to research, but I was surprised it was a little harder to find information on this particular topic of why we do something. Most likely because humans have been doing it for so long, and no one really questions why or the origin stories behind it. I'm your host, Emily Prokop, and this is the story behind ear piercing. But first, a quick message. Patch of Sky Farm creates skin and body care products with natural ingredients sourced from local Vermont farms. Products like Take Care Tattoo Salt, Violet Leaf Lip Balm, and Yoga Mat Disinfectant Spray. All made with organic herbs and oils from Vermont and New England. Patch of Sky Farm also offers meal planning, one-on-one nutrition coaching, and cooking classes from certified culinary nutrition expert Joanna Wilson-Phillips. Yes, Wilson-Phillips, like the band. Visit patchofskyfarm.com, and there will be a link in the show notes in case you can't write it down right this second. I'll be receiving samples to try out and let you know how I like them. And every time I check the mailbox and it's empty, I have to tell myself, hold on for one more day. Get it? Because her last name is Wilson Phillips? Yeah. When we talk about the history of body modification this week, one man will come into play for both episodes. He's known as Otzi the Iceman, the oldest mummy ever found. It's believed he lived during the late 4th century BC, and his body was found by two tourists in 1991 when they were hiking on the border between Austria and Italy. Otzi had his earlobes pierced and stretched between 7 and 11 millimeters. It's assumed piercings and tattoos were common practice back then. Another famous mummy from 2,000 years later is also thought to have had his ears pierced, King Tut. And Julius Caesar is said to have brought back the trend during his reign. Piercing is also referred to in the Bible as early as Genesis, when Abraham's son Isaac gives his future wife Rebecca a golden nose ring. In fact, nose rings are common as a symbol of matrimony, even today with peoples of the Middle East and North Africa. Husbands give their wives nose rings when they marry to indicate wealth, but it's also a form of alimony should the couple divorce. The wife can use the ring to support herself financially. Another mention in the Bible is in Exodus, when Aaron tells the Israelites to bring him earrings and other jewelry to build a golden idol. One reason the trend took off around the world was the superstitions surrounding the ears. You've most likely heard of the evil eye, but have you ever heard of the evil ear? In this superstition, those possessing the evil ear can curse those speaking, causing poor health or bad luck, or even stealing their soul. And some tribes in Africa, Turkey, Polynesia, and South America believe demons and evil spirits can enter a person through their ears, but metals, such as that in earrings, can repel those spirits. But these tribes aren't the only ones who wear earrings for luck. Another group of people who are known for their ear piercing have been around even before the biblical references. Sailors and Pirates Looking back to March's Luck and Superstition series, I should have done an episode all about the superstitions of the sea, because once you get into the world of sailor superstitions, it's hard to stop. Earrings for sailors have acted as talisman and good luck charms. Sailors would also have their ears pierced as a mark to show they've crossed the equator, or even sailed around the world. But that's debated in the historian community. Some sailors even believed piercing their ears would improve their eyesight. But one of the more interesting correlations between sailors and earrings was as a way to prepare in case of death at sea. Should a sailor not survive a shipwreck and his body wash ashore, the earring would provide enough money to either send his body home or for him to receive a proper Christian burial. Sailors would even engrave the name of his home port inside the earring. One true benefit to wearing hoop earrings for sailors, and especially pirates, is when firing cannons, they would dangle wax from their hoops and use it to plug their ears, protecting their hearing. During the English Renaissance, 
It wasn't uncommon to see any number of gentlemen sporting earrings, including Shakespeare and Francis Drake. But as time went on, earrings became more associated with pirates and other outlaws, not to mention pagan priests and shamans. By the 18th century, it became unfashionable for women to wear earrings. Besides, the fashion of large powdered wigs and high collars would have hidden the earrings anyway, so they fell out of favor for a little while. In the early 1900s, good and proper women of society wore clip-on earrings to show their virtue. Sideshow attractions and so-called unrefined cultures even sported piercings of other body parts like the tongue or lips. I won't go into too much detail to keep this podcast family-friendly, but a lot of stories you may hear about the names of piercings and origin stories associating with piercing other parts of the body were fabricated by two men named Jim Ward and Doug Malloy in the early 1970s. This is seen as ushering in the modern body piercing movement. But one body piercing may actually have some medical benefits. Following the same principles of acupuncture, many people with a piercing through their innermost cartilage of the ear, known as the daith piercing, have reported a decrease in migraine suffering. And even though 100 years ago it might not have been quite so much in fashion, nowadays 83% of men and women in the U.S. have had one or both earlobes pierced at least once. And the trend shows no sign of dying anytime soon. Information for this episode was sourced from PainfulPleasures.com, AllThatIsInteresting.com, StatisticBrain.com, LiveScience.com, and more links, which can be found in the show notes at TheStoryBehindPodcast.com. Follow on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at StoryBehindPod, or subscribe on your favorite podcast app so you'll never miss an episode. Thanks for listening.